Right then, this is the part where we get to put the pump back together again. So what I've done here is I've uh, put the back cover back on so that we can sit it vertical while we put the, uh, the rotor in. Um, this way we uh, make sure we don't lose this wave washer. You can do it horizontally but you just run the risk of it uh, falling into the windings so uh, I prefer to play it safe. Now if you didn't dot this pump earlier on when we were pulling it down, this is the bit where you curse yourself for not doing so. So these pumps have a fan baffle, an uh, internal fan baffle where the, uh, the fan sits inside of. And it has holes in it where the through bolts go through. So this is why it's a good idea to mark it or dot it when you're pulling it apart because it'll cost you 10 or, or more minutes trying to, to line it all back up again. So just taking the fan cover back off, I actually called this a fan cowl earlier on but um, as you know now these pumps have an, an internal fan on the drive end so this is really just a, a cover to protect the switch and all the wiring. I always like to spin the shaft to make sure that nothing is catching. I'm just tapping the top of it here to make sure the registers are true um, before putting the through bolts in and uh, tightening them up. So there's a definite knack to this part of it. This is putting the centrifugal switch back on or the uh, rotary part of the centrifugal switch. Now I put the uh, put the screw in first and then screw it into the uh, the thread on the uh, non-drive-in shaft. Very very important to line up the bracket that holds the little weight um, with the slots that are in the end of the shaft it's got to be flush so if you look at it from the side you'll see that it's sitting properly if it's not then uh, it's going to affect the stationary part of the switch because it won't be making even contact and uh, there'll be dead spots in the uh, switch so as you can see this is me just putting the weight back into the uh, the bracket now the um, the square bit or the weight bit goes to the bottom uh, you have to tighten it up because remember we um, uh, loosened this off a little bit earlier on so just give it a little twig and make sure that, uh, that the weight is not going to come out of those holes again. The, um, the springs, now these, these are the springs, you'll, you'll notice that um, the, uh, the loop on one side and the hook on the other side are off centre. Um, so the flat part goes parallel to the switch itself. If it goes the other way then the spring itself will be hitting the plate and um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll see what I mean if I have a little bit of a close-up in a second. So holding the spring with long nose pliers just on the very edge so there's still enough room to get the spring over that tab. Now this video has been a little bit longer than I expected. Um, I was going to make this um, 7 out of 8, but I think I'm going to have to go to 9 um, because we have to put on the uh, stationary part of the switch yet and uh, we haven't even got to uh, put in the seals. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to cut this pretty short guys and um, I'll have to uh, put on the, the next part and do the rest uh, next video.